And we're live. So today we're interviewing the amazing Oase. Oase came to Australia as an international student to study a bachelor's in civil engineering back in 2019. He became a client of ours as well a little while back and was successful in securing fairly recently a graduate engineer position with a Sydney-based construction company. In this podcast, we're going to go over Oase's story, how he landed the job, things like that. And a fun fact about Always, he actually started watching these videos uh, quite some time ago before actually landing his uh, job in the field. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. If you do want to contact Always, feel free to reach out on LinkedIn after you've looked at this interview. So welcome, Always. Thanks for coming. Uh, thank you for having me, Bukhansi. Always a pleasure and also to be, you know, an honor being part of this podcast. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I'll, I'll try and get it done as quick as we can so you can have oh, some, no. <laughs> some rest. Fine. That's fine. I, I can troop through it. No worries. Thank you for coming. Okay, let's get into it. So what's the biggest thing that motivated you to come to Australia and pursue a career in the civil engineering sector? Well, one of the biggest things for me to actually coming to Australia was the fact that I was always intrigued about civil engineering, even while studying and we, very early on, especially in Pakistan, people decide, oh, you're going to be an engineer or a doctor. That's the point where oh, I said, I'll be an engineer. And mm -hmm. I said, oh, a civil engineer sounds all right. I do like fascination with this infrastructure and everything. So doing a lot of research on that and before even coming to Australia, I got the privilege of traveling to the UK as well and then doing a, some bit of my studies down there as well. Understanding the landscape of the job market and the environment building around the whole civil engineering industry and everything, real, I realized that oh, Australia is kind of like the future of infrastructure because this country being the first world country, it still has a lot to do in progressing in its infrastructure and still there's heaps of construction going on. It still is. The industry is kind of slowing down, but there's still, still a lot to do here in this country. So yeah, so that decision to come to Australia was kind of fueled by that plus getting a decent scholarship at my university as well so just made that decision a lot easier that's awesome congrats on the scholarship i don't think i knew about that oh well I just forgot. <laughs> sorry <laughs> side note how do people get scholarships <laughs> oh well i'll be honest decent grades again I'm not the one of the best best talkers about decent grades. Like I did well in my first start of university, but kind of that hit that plateau. But yeah, decent grades being consistent, that's that's kind of kind of the main thing. Especially in my A levels that I found supported me. That kind of helped. Uh, I tried going for the sports scholarship. I was kind of into golf growing up. Had a decent decent tour around in Pakistan. Did a few tournaments, but uh, that kind of failed. So, so studies studies is a good point of if you really want a decent scholarship yeah. that's awesome that you you were thinking of getting a sports one so you're do you still play golf i not recently i i just do i'm just not getting the time as well and a few of my friends are not really into it as mm. with golf it's kind of like a whole thing you have to have the whole equipment and everything and I do like the game itself, but sometimes it just gets boring when you're just out there alone, uh, especially down in Western Sydney. You really don't have that many golf courses nearby where I live. So you have to like really drive one one hour or so. And I really want my weekends to, especially after this job, to just to sleep. <laughs> just to relax. Well, yeah. let's, let's get into the, the job search then. So when you started job searching, which would have been a, you know, a little while back, how challenging would you say it was say out of 10 well 10 being the hardest i would give it i would give it a i would give it a nine it it was it was hard it was hard it's and it was rough um, it, i'll say it's a lot harder when you don't have the right guidance or where you're just really nearly just applying for jobs you really don't have the perspective of the job market and I'll say the required skills for certain jobs as well. Usually people look at ads and say, oh, this certain job doesn't require an experience. This certain job doesn't require such skills and I should apply for it. But somehow, some way they reach an interview and they realize, oh, there were certain skills required. There's some certain kind of communication skills required, technical skills required. 
that kind of he kind of demotivates the person as well who's just out there without any guidance so but with guidance it's, it gets a lot easier i'll say it gets a lot simpler in a sense that it kind of starts becoming automated for you let's see you see it you see a job ad you know what to do i have to make a tailored co cover letter i have to do a very good resume for this you make a certain resume for a certain job you kind of get into that process and it starts becoming automated or auto automated then you start getting those work if you're lucky enough you get one of those interviews as well so yeah if but still still it's still a challenge especially for your first job i wouldn't say it's easy easy like there's a lot of people out there who said oh i got my job pretty easy but if if i go by my experience it was pretty tough especially mm -hmm. straight out of uni you have so much such a hard large amount of ambitions you're like oh I'll just did my degree and in your mind in back of your mind you're like oh degree was the biggest part of my career building process and i should get this job straight away then you kind of get hit with that reality that ah oh, not really i still have to do some decent amount of work which is which is where i think your your statement comes in handy of that you usually says that job finding is kind of a second job as well you got to have to treat it as a second job as well so that level of commitment is always required mm. yeah it's fascinating so so what would you say i think we picked up on a few key things there but what would you say at first was the most challenging thing about the job search was it like the lack of understanding around just the system you could use to get jobs what was it well the first thing was basically when you when you graduate as a fresh graduate you yeah, you have that internship experience that is kind of required most universities out in Australia. You get the six months, eight months. So you, you kind of are at an equal platform with a lot of graduates, and you come out thinking through the gate is that if I'm at the equal, I'm, I'm equal with my peers, I should get the equal opportunities as well. That's really not actually the case. There's a lot of people who benefit from work placements that you never got opportunities for. There's a lot of people who have been in the country, especially international students, where working rights come and play a lot, especially who are on student visas with that limited time as well. So there's a lot of different factors. There's a lot of different factors. I will say getting a good grasp of the market, it's, it's when you self-explore rather than rely on job fairs or the wonderful posts you see on LinkedIn. You really have to dig deep, get actual reality of it. I know I don't want to paint a very grim picture of the job market, but that's kind of is the reality in my sense that again, there's there's a lot of graduate programs that say, oh, you can join us. We are equal opportunity employers and everything. We give equal chances to everyone. But I, there has to be a realization if there is a candidate that's the best, the best, he's going to get selected. So mm. that's that's kind of that's kind of is where gauging the actual reality of the job market this is a big reality and people have to kind of go through it even like my words wouldn't do it justice but i'll the, the good part of of that is that that whole experience of finding a job and once you get it it's it's a wonderful feeling like it's because in that time during understanding the job market kind of kind of becomes your kind of your aim or your goal and once you achieve it you're like oh that this feels wonderful so that's that's kind of brightening up the whole picture yeah yeah it's it is a challenge for a lot of people isn't it especially especially people in this kind of position especially you know international students new country and lack of understanding around the specifics lack of connections and you're right it does kind of the, the all those job ads out there they kind of paint a bit of a false reality don't they it's like hey we, we hire anyone this this is a this is free for anyone but really you look at the people who have the jobs and a lot of them have three or four internships they already know people at the company they're citizens yeah exactly so uh and i don't really blame the country it's not me bashing the people who put ads out there no one's gonna be honest on it you know what you'll be able... there are certain ads out there are pretty honest you like they'll be like oh i need high distinction achievers i need one percenter of universities which is relatively kind of i don't really like them as well but again it's all about the real and the reality fact that in this world 
opportunity is there for people who seek it, not for it's not equal for everyone, which is the harsh reality. Even though you come through the same education or the same studies or mm. so yeah, it's yeah. it's not as it seems, is it? It's not as it, it seems. No, it's it's not as it seems, but you still have to keep trying. That's that's kind of keeps pushing me as well. You still have to keep trying. There's a lot of people in this world who kept trying and achieved a lot. I'll say you are a decent example of that as well. Like you got a wonderful job, even and you experimented a lot of new positions. Then I know this whole grad job, the whole this program that you run, it's kind of a, your on, entrepreneurship uh, kind of thing. It, it w w wouldn't be an easy step, I believe. It's, it's pretty hard to do a well-paying, stable income to go to explore more avenues that is just new. Like what you are doing, it's in my sense, there's a lot of people who do that, but not in a more close or personal level or a more clear cut level where everyone is kind of included and feel like, oh, I can go and ask this person this question. I get, get an answer for that. So yeah, this, that's, I'm still rambling. Sorry. For that. No, that's cool. I, I like it. Uh, we're getting into the, into the details. So yeah, in, in short, it was challenging. Did you ever think about giving up on the job search? Oh, yes. Oh, there, there was points here. Yeah. Uh, there were points where I actually went back to Pakistan as well. I'm like, you know what? Uh, my father has a business. I can just go there and start working with him, do something with that. In my mind, I kept thinking that. And I did actually went back to Pakistan. And, and always I do credit my father in that as well having chats with him, understanding how he came through life. Because in my eyes, I do, he is my idol. And growing up, and he sacrificed a lot, worked hard to get to a point where he is in Pakistan supporting his moderately smart son out in Australia through his studies and everything. Uh, but chatting with him, understanding, like he was really happy for me to get into the family business and everything. But he this, there was this one question he asked me that, do you do you feel like you fulfilled all your goals were when when you were out there, and in reality, it, it never felt like I fulfilled my goals. Like your civil engineering for me, always believed I can be part of this industry. Always intrigued me. I want to be part of this industry. Study about projects. He's learn about projects. All because I always like the challenge. And for me, civil engineering always had a growing challenge every time. I look at new projects like oh. This is a good project it would have this 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 issues i really want to manage them as well i want to see them through me work through them find solutions so that that feeling of not being fulfilled always kept bringing you back to the job search and i think on that, at that point i joined your program as well uh yeah i think after that point i joined your program i think the first what i remember you connecting me over linkedin it took me a while to kind of break the ice with you as well like oh because i was just going through your profile and the beauty videos and everything like should i take this step should i take this step then i said you know what i'll take it at the first meeting with you and i think uh i think the first meeting was with you and Chobi. i don't really remember but but nevertheless both of you uh, whenever i've chatted i feel motivated and you kind of when you spoke with me communicated with me you kind of encouraged me you have a decent personality your communications are good you're kind of a decent fit in the australian market and everything these are your skills we can you identified areas where we can work at and everything so that also kind of helped me so as soon as i got into the stride of that I actually came back to australia again did my part-time job at Woolsworth as well while i was back here again continued with that and the job search as well so back to the Ben Rebling. Uh back to the question about giving up. Yes, there was times where there were many many times where I said, you know what, I give up. Even the first month when I started applying for jobs, because as soon as you even before you study your final exam, you have posters of coming graduate programs, graduate programs, graduate programs, graduate programs, and GHD are opening up record number of applications, CPB are opening up record number of applications. You can apply, you can get a job easily. You sit through all those assessments and everything then first one the second one you get the awful email unfortunately you haven't moved forward unfortunately you did this 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 that so the first two months you give up as well that you you know settle back up stand keep going keep going you said oh 
fine, I didn't get a job with the tier one. I'll go for a tier two. Then you don't get a job with the tier two. Then you go, you know what? I'll go for a tier four or tier three. Uh, it's just, it's just a, it's, just, it's an uphill. It's an uphill battle, like everything in life. It's just an uphill battle. So you, you, you did think about giving up many times, but some things kind of kept you motivated. Like it seems like your dad was a big. My um, dad is, for a lot of things, my dad is always a big, big part because either in uh, sometimes in anger or either in love, he did does hold me a lot, like pushes me towards the right thing always. But that and also that the feeling of fulfillment as well. That feeling of fulfillment is not because I have a job that I feel fulfilled. It's just that it is something that I was working towards for a while. Same thing as a degree as well. Like, be, I don't know, there's a lot of people with degrees who were, when they hit their third year, they'll be thinking like, oh, why am I actually doing this? And their fulfillment comes after four years when you actually get the degree. Like, oh, this is what I'm doing this for. So for me, degree was the degree was pretty important, but after that, the second ambition was trying to get a civil engineer just to show myself that I'm actually am what I think of myself as. It's not that I'm just not a big talker or just might be just might be just full of myself. Seeing it through. Seeing it through, yes. That's the word, seeing it through. I really want to see it through. Because well, I'm currently 26, so at these ages, people do say you have to do as much experimentation as you can. Like moving forward, there's still more time to maybe, maybe this is not the path. Maybe this is not something I'm actually kept actually aiming for. Maybe I change it online, but I have to see it through. And so, so what would you say, you know, things are kind of tough. Thought about giving up a few times. So there might be some other people watching this who are in the same boat, you know, like what back when you maybe with in that position, you watch this yep, video. Yep. Or, or whoever it was at the time, I don't remember. But what what do you think is like the first step you took to overcome it? The first step I took was, well, it's it's kind of a cliche slogan from Nike, just do it one. You just have to give a stand up. If you're applying for a job, stand up, make that resume, send your first resume in send that connection into a person there's this one thing i did it kind of really helped just breaking the ice is that when i popped up linkedin i looked at all the tier ones and looked at all their company like directors managers and everything i said you know what it really doesn't hurt i'll send them a connection because uh, i don't know if a lot of people go through this or not some people actually think that I did uh, that. Oh, I'm not that experienced. I shouldn't be sending this uh, this higher up a person at connection, you know. But sending out those a few 20, 30, you get two or three decent replies. Oh, thank you for connecting. Oh, I see your profile. You you are a graduate engineer. Keep striving. There's always room for in the industry. Those words maybe for them they don't really matter. For a person like me, so all to push me along. So to really break that whole barrier of giving up on everything, you just have to do it. You just have to stand up wash your face and grab a cup of coffee, walk around a bit, grab a laptop, just send out even the smallest or the weakest recipe you can send. And basically, even if you're not part of the program, just send out the resume. Google uh, Google Ads would uh, automatically identify, oh, this man is out after resume. So they'll just give 10 to top tips how to make a resume. And you know what? Even in this day and age, chat GBD is a really good option. Like you. The next thing were ten top ten tips how to make a resume on Jack TV as well. So there's a lot of things that's just once you step in, there's a lot of things keep pulling you in, pulling you in, pulling you in. Mm. So that's kind of like so just do it. Don't give up. Just do it and get the ball yep. rolling. Kind of get some momentum and and keep pushing. And like as soon as you get those that taste of a bit of a win. Yep. Exactly. Just the taste of those wins. Your first interview would be your win. Your first assessment that you passed would be a win. A nice, kind reply on LinkedIn would be your first win. You have to treat them as your first win. Don't don't think that, oh, this was just a small step. It really doesn't matter. All of this, all of that matters. Even that giving up part kind of matters as well. Hmm. Because once you hit that, if you want it, once you're into the job market as well, there will be times when you're doing your 9 to 5, you'll be like, you know what? Do I really need this? I was doing just fine. Do I really need this? So that whole mentality or 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 that 
whole life episode of oh i gave up and then i got back up and got this kind of pushes pushes you along as well even pushes you along to get another or might be a better position or a better job you change jobs so and what would you say in terms of your job search strategy what would you say were the main things you changed or, or did you really change a lot or was it more about just your mindset well i did i did not change my job strategy a lot i tweaked it i tailored it a lot in a sense that when i joined the program i was already doing those linkedin connections but i'm i wasn't doing them as constantly or in the volume that you guys recommended or you guys said you should achieve this or you need to do that i probably wasn't tailoring my resume so perfectly the way you guys wanted to be tailored in a certain powerful bullet point or powerful action way I'm sorry i just forgot what expert mm -hmm. i know you used a very important title for those power bullet points so i didn't actually was doing that but i did it after learning those th things i kind of started doing that as well and increasing the frequency of applying to jobs and also not, one more thing was not to be afraid from networking which is mm. i kind of i kind of started learning that bringing building that conference up to just to chat with people go out there and chat with people for jobs as like there was this part in your, uh, I think, in the program that it says, like, just go out there, hand in your resumes, the coffee chats, basically. A for coffee chats, B, B, more social, B. Try to attach a face to that resume. It just shouldn't just be a paper. So that kind of, that strategy, I think, really would work. That kind of I aimed for as well. When I started networking, I never went to a job fair on my own or, like, just really nearly stood up and went there. I actually went to a job fair the I think wasn't last year or last year I think it was down in July this year uh, no March this year it was in Western Sydney that job mm -hmm. fair was basically for I mean they were aiming for high schoolers I would be the only one of the few graduates out there it's still kind of it's kind of jarring being part of those high schoolers and you're just this kind of an old guy in front of them just looking dressed completely sophisticated in a in a button up and like tries to impress basically and these guys are just in their high school uniforms so you go out there you go to the booths and start chatting with them and that that i wouldn't have that confident without learning the importance of networking mm. quick side side question yep it seems like uh you kind of uh, you were able to grow your confidence levels a bit yes what what would you what would you like to someone watching this who's feeling who, who would be scared to just message someone on linkedin let alone wear a suit to a networking event with high schoolers they're thinking how does this guy have the confidence what would you say to them is the you know plan they can uh, uh, i don't know maybe well my confidence really comes from a point where I've used, you might see that I do make a few jokes here and there. Mm. So my confidence comes from a point that I always find myself being a decent speaker and everything, and also to especially the people who be listening. And a lot of I know people come from countries or backgrounds that English is not their first language. They do speak it and everything. Mm. And for a lot of people, English, they think, oh, to this person who is born and lived in Australia, do I sound all right to him? Do I sound sound australian enough there's a lot of things like i'm not saying it I, everyone goes through that but i'm just saying what comes into in the insecurities that actually come up when you're networking with people mm -hmm. and when you're in front of a person who's trying to give you a job and you're there seeking it so my confidence actually came up to a point where i started meeting people and realizing oh i'm saying this word wrong but this person is not reacting so it should it would be all right if i keep doing this as well kind of catching those points where I'm just struggling to even structure a sentence because I'm either too I'm too scared or the anxiety is playing up, but still that person is really helping me along into, oh, I get that. Oh, you're trying to say that. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Don't worry. On well, if anyone's who's struggling to make up may have chat with people or you know, I always find humor is the best gap filler. 
when you're having a long conversation instead of sitting there blank or ro just rolling your eyes here and there it's just humor would be the best gap filler in my opinion try try having a funny one maybe just make a joke of you have a coffee in front of you being it oh this, this is not enough caffeine for me i need a v but that's the that's a bad joke, that's a bad joke but yeah so <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure about it's, that one. Right, it's pretty funny, but <laughs> I, I, I'm trying. <laughs> but yeah, be be critical of yourself, but to a point, just note that how observe how critical people are 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 of you as well. There's a lot of things people think that matter to the world that really don't matter. It doesn't. It to to a lot of people, it doesn't matter. You confuse your theirs and theirs or thems and thems or are and is it really doesn't matter until the result and your personality is positive the people are happy the employer is happy and the job giver is happy awesome so it's it it seems like it kind of again like a, a lot of your confidence came or you seem to have already been a bit of a confident guy but then just going out and taking action and seeing hey actually this is okay this is safe again it just it just comes back to that point of getting that ball rolling just doing yeah. that just do it just stand up and go stand up and go and believe me it takes a lot to make me stand up and go i mean i'll i'll be said i'll be in my bed for one hour thinking should i be there should i go i mean it really doesn't matter but you just have to stand up and just do it just run just run and so you, you yeah 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 sorry you so i mean just run just don't let your mind have second thoughts what what I find as well is is you have to kind of just do it long enough to at least see one shred of evidence or one small win, and then that's when you're you kind of start to get a bit more motivated. You're, hey, this director at GHD just said he would have a coffee with me. Oh my god! Yep, uh, that's that's actually true. Like having. I'll go with that job top fair example. So I met this uh, met this people's advisor or HR person at that uh, uh, workshop. Oh, sorry, that job fair, and just having that chat with him, and she's like, "Oh, you can reach, you can connect to me on LinkedIn." I told her, oh, "I'm already connect. I already sent you a connection, but I don't know if he's still in your inbox. But do <laughs> give it a just do give it a double check, and just uh, my name is this Muhammad Ois. I gave her a printed copy of her resume and everything." But surely enough, when I got home, I saw she accepted my connection as well. That that kind of that kind of that small win. Then she 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 told me that they have this program and everything, and she forwarded her my resume to the project managers out in the field who I need a junior engineer or a graduate engineer with them. And two days later, she came back. Oh, they don't really need 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 any engineers, so we don't have any positions. But she did lead me to a recruiter who said, oh, you should connect to him. And because I came with a recommendation, that recruiter also promptly messaged me back. So, yeah, th those kind of small wins or big wins, they really help you along. You just have to tying uh, tying up those knots to that rope that you keep pulling. Just keep on pulling, keep on pulling. And so, how did you actually get your current job, the graduate engineer job? What was the process like? So the current job was that. Uh, the uh, NUX as a company, as a filing company, it's uh, relatively new. It's been five years with the uh, five years with this well, five years of this company, and it's a really wonderful company. They just uh, do well in filing. Filing is kind of like a specialized form of civil civil engineering infrastructure work. So they were looking for they were looking for engineers, and they posted that on LinkedIn and everything. And they start posting jobs on certain job groups as well, like on Facebook, even people are usually doing those WhatsApp groups as well. So there was this job just flying around. And my resume was out there. And luckily, they they took my resume in. And one of their project managers saw my resume. He's like, oh, we have this position, senior project managers. If he sees this video, he might get angry. Uh, so he took my resume in. and. So uh, he called me up. So, oh, you have this this experience. You did that this, and well, he gave me an interview about his company and everything. He said, oh, are you keen on an interview? And before the interview, do you mind sending me your 
results and your work here that you have done. So in my resume, I usually write I've done AutoCAD, uh, AutoCAD, Revit, and Bluebeam, which are three kind of the most popular software in this industry. So uh, I send them all the work I did and everything. I send them my results as well from uni. Again, coming coming to that point that I was a good student coming up to uni. Then I kind of hit that plateau. So the grades were not that expensive. I was still still passing, still passing with decent numbers and everything, credits and these, but not the best of the best. So he kind of bring brought up a point like, all oh, these these grades are not impressive enough." I'm like, "Well, you are right, but." I did tell him that apart from grades, you can see the commitment in those mark sheets that I never skipped a year or never skipped a class. All my classes, are, all those grades are a, a test that I actually show up. And I kind of made a point with him that this kind of shows an example of my commitment to this industry or the studies or civil engineering that I never gave up. Even with there was points where you can see my grades take a toll, which during basically COVID. But I still didn't give up. I still went through with it. So he said, oh, fine. I'll, we'll organize an interview. Hmm. Even before that, I remember uh, having a chat with him. He told me that you just have to get your foot in. So during before even that interview, he gave me a second call. He said, oh, fine. We have organized this interview with our general manager. I'm like, oh, that's nice. So he's like, uh, just have the same chat or the same interview energy that you had with with me on that call. I'm like, surely, surely I'll have that. And I also let him know that even if there's a point where you feel like my grades are the deciders of this job, let me do an internship with you. Let me do an internship with you. Then you just judge me on my commitment and my work ethic and maybe even the knowledge I have in the industry. You might be right or you might be wrong. And you like me and you hire me full time. So. Mm -hmm. Then maybe a week later, we sat in that interview where the general manager, Eddie Shen Shanley, was there, a uh, wonderful person. Uh, they, the interview, they had were questions about my resume and everything, uh, what name I prefer as well, like it's Mohammed Ways. I told him, uh, don't, don't use Mohammed because there's a lot of Mohammeds in this industry. So, but uh, yeah, so again with those jokes. So, there was a lot of questions and he brought up my results and everything. I've made the same point with him. Like with even those results, you can just see my commitment. And uh, other than that, I'm very eager to join your company. It's piling. I know a bit about piling, but I know it's a critical part of his infrastructures and construction work. So I'm very keen to get on about, I, I've told him I'm really available as well. My other job is pretty much happy because at Woodsworth, I was doing pretty well. and. They they were trying my their best not let me go, but they were kind enough to understand my ambition that this wasn't really the place I'll be here for forever. So out that and everything, they said, you know what? We'll discuss it with our other operations manager, Jack Longstar, and get back to you. Shortly, two three the two three days later, I got the good news that they actually offered me the contract and everything, and I'm like, oh, grateful. So that's. Uh, in me saying all that, you might a lot of people who might who get to watch this video would understand. Oh, it was pretty easy. And again, I'll say that it is easy, but you just have to do that effort and the job in the brand. You really have to build up that confidence and everything. That when you're in front of a person who is a senior project manager or even a general manager to a company, not to lose focus and be confident enough to to show your own worth as well. Like put out there, you, a lot of people go into interviews thinking, oh, he might not be up to that or anything, or we just be a yes man or something. Just be out there and tell them the truth, what it is. You never can hide what's on paper. Like for example, if you have a bad grade, there's no way to hide that. You won't say, oh, you know what? I didn't feel good that semester, so that's why I have a bad grade. Usually people say, oh, come up with reasons or like that. But but during during my time, and during the job search and during the interview process, I've always found that being honest is the best thing. Being honest because if you're honest, your voice and your the way you come forward in front of people, it's completely genuine. And if it's a made up story, 
people who have done a lot of interviews, they can each easily catch on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's kind of like the whole. I'm I'm not I'm pretty sure that's all the all the details that went into getting that interview. Awesome. So was the job advertised on Seek or anything, or was it more just posted out onto these platforms? It was posted like out because uh, it was posted out because again, it, they were planning to post it out in on job seek or uh, job seeker sites like seek indeed and even linkedin but it was mostly posted on their linkedin page that we are looking for graduate engineers or they, they didn't even use the word engineer graduate engineers said engineers and it was posted on forums and groups because because i think in the company they already decided oh we need an engineer and people just start posting out like oh we need an engineer and everything so you can got the early bird or the first fish or maybe the first hook I threw in and got caught my resume was the first one that popped up and well not the first one which I found out relatively later once I started my job <laughs> but uh but yeah being a being again that whole networking part just searching around not just on the traditional job seeker the websites and everything uh it kind of helped me securing this job and how, how did you find so how did you come across that post? Because um, not so, everyone would have seen it, right? Yeah, so basically, uh, I'll say at least uh, 100 to 200 or 300 people would have seen that post. I just, uh, it just came around because I have this uh, good feature. There's a good feature on LinkedIn that you just put engineers in your near locality or anything like Sydney, Western Sydney, Inner Sydney, you do that and any new ads pop in. And this the the group that I joined was engineer was uh, jobs for engineers, uh, international engineers and everything. They popped it was it kind of was a weird time when that post post. So I think at two a.m. or something, I quickly just saw the email. You know what? At even at two a.m., I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm still sending my resume through. Hmm. So it just again just being on on point that treating this as a kind of full time job as well. So you, so you see an opportunity send it again i never in this job search and everything never shied away from an opportunity so if it was an internship that said it's an unpaid internship i'll put in my resume if it's it says a junior engineer i'll put it in my resume anything that's relatively closer to my field and gets my foot in i never hesitated in putting my resume in. so there's a lot of people in, in their career the start of their career they start cherry picking what kind of what kind of standard of job they need you kind of have to um i won't say just don't aim for the big big tier jobs but if you are building up your career from scratch like me you really have to understand that you have to step on those stairs first to get to the top position you might be like you might there's a lot of people who could listen to this and they'll be like you know what i'm skilled enough i have all the grades that you can I, i'll go to the top tier companies i could get you into kpmg and everything get into their graduate programs even those people would, I don't want to say it, but realize that it's still very competitive. Even even the top, top tier ones still are uh, pretty competitive. So yeah, just being on point and not shying away from any opportunity that comes up. Don't, don't think an opportunity is too small or too big for you. That's what my understanding is. Mm. Yeah, there's that really nice, uh, I guess, analogy of the escalators. Yes. I don't know if... Yeah, like like your, your dream job's kind of at the top of this escalator. You're at the bottom, and a lot of people they just they keep trying to like skip and just jump right to the top. When in reality, sometimes it's just nice to at least get on the elevator as quickly as you can. It is just true. A lot of people are there. They're like, you know what? I can aim for that and everything, which is a in all in all honesty, it's great to have people that are ambitious enough to do that. There's a, there are a lot of people who are actually able to achieve that as well, mm -hmm. but I, you you have to realize as unique you are in your personality, in your life, and everything. The world and well, oh, it's just me saying something weird, but the world and the economy and everything, it's still the same, same for everyone. You still still a but it's still a, a battle, it's still a fight. And the first person who takes that step in that race or that fight is the one who's the threat, it's not the one who's who had the larger step, or it's not the one who would leap the forward when he was just walking. 
is the one who actually takes the step and stays consistent. What do you think was the biggest thing that made you stand out versus the other candidates when you got this graduate offer? Well, what uh, after joining the company, I kind of asked them what was the biggest thing that uh, I had the same question with them what was the biggest thing that kind of made me stand out. They said that whole demeanor you had of learning the words mm -hmm. you use that you said you really want to learn and you're open to learning at any point. You just want to learn you. You understood your weaknesses and you were open to that because in the first meeting, I just told them because I was coming from even internships. I was coming from presidential internships. This was an in infrastructure, a more commercial job with a lot more liabilities and a lot more responsibilities. So I was very open to that. I told them like, I'm very open to learning. I understand I'm, I'm a beginner. I won't be the best. I won't be cocky. I won't come in to it being a know-it-all. I'm open to learning to everyone. And you, in the construction industry, you have to realize that in, there's a lot of people who do, who do engineering. They think they're the top of the industry, like the top, top dog, like or the engineer decides everything. You have to realize in Australia, it's a bit different, especially for engineers or civil engineers. If they're listening to it, it's a kind of a decent tip. You have to realize the people on the field, the laborers, the supervisors, the foremen, the offsiders, who, the operators who actually work on the ground, those people are the real deciders of how good a project goes. An engineer can do all his maths, his planning, his app, he can do all the management part, planning, future, future looking, anything he can do, but it really comes down to the people who are on the ground and how he manages himself with them. Because there's a kind of a stigma in the industry that oh, engineers think a lot of themselves and the super are like, oh, you know what? I don't want to listen to you. Well, so you <laughs> you kind of have to, once you're even in this industry, you kind of start building yourself up from the ground. Because there will be a time where you would have that cushier job where you would be able to order people around. Not saying that's the goal of an engineer, but you still have to kind of understand once you're even in, you still have to kind of build yourself up. Because people who do work by their hand, Surely they know a lot more than a person who read, read it in a book and did an MCQ on. There's some really good uh, good insights there for people looking to break into the the civil engineering space. I'm, I'm really curious because the interview process for you it seemed like you were how, actually how many interviews did you have before getting an offer? A few, a few. This this talking or this confidence has built up a lot of failed interviews. I had I had around maybe maybe or 30 30 interviews. 30? Yeah. You remember yeah. when I, when I joined your course I you was I think Anchovy was surprised that I already had 15 to 20 interviews already and mm. really really couldn't identify the point why I was failing. It usually came to a point where having less experience or having a more readily available uh, candidate. So, mm. so interesting. So yes, now I'm I recall this. So what do you think it was about your interview preparation for this particular role that was different to what you've done before? Like was there was it kind of similar or was there something you changed? Well I did to change or something, I, I changed this whole rambling part of myself, which I'm going through with you as well. Like just keep on talking, 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 have a story on story, story, because you have to understand that interviews are professional and the the day they're not there to listen to your life story or any, anything. So yeah, but tidying up my interview process of being being honest but st and precise, no, not just saying words to match words or make sentences or just it's not saying stuff that just the sake of completing the interview. So you still have to realize that person in next two years, though he's very interested in your story, but he's still there to off hire a high working, high performing individual for his company and will benefit his company. So really tidying that up and going through those interview processes and, and also recording interviews, sending those interviews to you to, to have a kind of a recap of of, I think the cue cards that you have and just recording an interview, having you see them, or you can improve on this point, you can improve on that point, and everything. And those those tricks really, I don't say tricks, but those exercises really help. 
in structuring a story, especially when they asked me about a certain experience. Because I had a few experiences on like internships and everything. So really have to structure it in a way it feels relevant to the employer that you're currently speaking to. Mm. Got it. And and how much how much time did you spend preparing for the interview, the one that you well I I well I didn't prepare much because again this is a relatively new company. So apart from finding about what filing is or anything, there's not much insights into a smaller company other than that their key performances or the projects they were doing or anything. You really see those and you you'll be like, oh, this is the this is a big project for this company. But when you realize once I got into the company out there, they do decent a lot of the projects, just that they didn't have a big social or a media presses that you ever actually able to research well on it. So mm -hmm. apart from that, I did pick I say I did take uh, give it a day or two where I prepared because again a lot of people would take more time to prepare because there would be their tenth or the fifteenth interview. I was coming through a lot of interviews, so I knew the whole due diligence of the process. And again, the main chunk of it is just killing that anxiety and the feeling of the uh, the nervous feeling before the interview before that that camera will, the camera light goes white. So this is mm. an online interview again. Awesome. What? Well, so what? Well, I don't want to. I know we're going pretty long here, but what's the? What would you say? Looking back, was the biggest mistake you made when you started job searching that you wish? It's something you wish you knew earlier. The biggest mistake I think I made was again going to back back to that point. Real thinking that graduate programs and a certain certain job a certain type of job a certain company is is the dead set company that's going to take me thinking that oh this is the only company i should apply for not any other positions or any other jobs being very tunnel vision to that point not open to exploring other opportunities as well people should i think a lot of people already know i realized it a little a bit on that in every industry, either you're doing IT, cybersecurity, finance, becoming an analyst, an artist, or even an engineer, even a civil engineer, there's, there's a lot of things you can explore before actually getting that whole big title of a civil engineer. There's a lot of ways to step into the industry. Like as a civil engineer, you can get in as a planner, an estimator, a site engineer, project coordinator, whatever gets you exposure into the industry. For me, my biggest mistake was that I was gunning for the civil engineer titled positions or making sure this this job description or this job responsibility matches my dream understanding what a civil engineer should be. So yeah, so being tunnel vision would, would be my biggest issue. And yeah. kind of kind of that whole give up mentality, I have to battle with that as well. If someone's really demoralized by the job search right now, they're in, say they were kind of where you were a while ago, what would you say to them? If you were just speaking to them head on? Speaking to them head on is, I'll say it, a lot of people, especially the people in our generation, so in the current environment, they, they, they are exposed to a lot of, uh, I don't, don't really blame any other people, but they're exposed to a lot of people's accomplishments and, and everything. I'll say close that phone and close anything that's that you're just watching and you, there's someone's happiness and you don't feel good. That means it's the time to step back from that, right? And sit back and actually appreciate what you actually have done. There's a lot of people, they come from countries, places, they were coming from struggling families or struggling environments to, for them the biggest achievement was and coming and entering australia a country that is completely alien to them that's a big achievement in my sense so appreciate that when you st first step into that university you get through that first year appreciate that if you have completed your degree also appreciate that you got that part-time job you're just a filler or a stupid hacker at woolies or coals appreciate that as well if you are doing Uber Eats, you're doing, there's a lot of people who do odd jobs, especially international students, they come in, they have to make their ends meet and everything. So 
you have to understand you have to appreciate all that never talk down to your because those are accomplishments you when you come out here in your country you're alone first you're away from your family you're making yourself strong and stable that's the achievement in itself as well so anyone who's feeling demotivated and if they get more demotivated with the, with the whole dog guide through this video just remember to step back and realize that you as a person as an individual have already done a lot that a lot of people aren't able to do there's a lot of people who still are behind you who are still blaming their conditions but you know what you said you know what you know what effort i'll i'll do the job i'll take that step and you move forward that's the achievement in itself that first hard and 10 bucks that falls in your account that's an achievement as well so just start appreciating that and then you realize oh the day when you get the biggest achievement it's going to be as good as the first achievement you had that's I mean, really it. I was just that that's pretty much there really is to a person's like I won't say it or try hard read motivational books or watch movies or I mean that helps a lot of people I won't say that that's the authentic and the real way I feel like people should because a lot of people don't really appreciate what they are themselves they don't really appreciate where they are they should start appreciating that because once they do their whole level of confidence changes oh my camera did it so is it going out no it's good oh man. so yeah people have to have apart from confidence just appreciate who you are as a person as an individual that and believe me that kind of would eliminate that whole give up or feeling down mentality maybe if you don't if you don't feel like saying that to yourself write it down reading it reading it might help you as well mm. kind of being grateful be grateful of be grateful of the person you are mm. Mm. people are usually grateful for their wealth something they own something they buy something they do they, a lot of people aren't grateful as grateful for a person they are themselves the personality they have they aren't grateful for the mentality they have the achievement they have they own they got they achieved so just be grateful of who you are as a person it's the best thing i love it yeah I can't. sorry about being a too cliche though no no it's, it's it's good it's each of these podcasts these interviews they have a different flavor to them and this is a really this is a good flavor ah it's thank a, you very much it's a bit of a contrast to some of the other ones so it's it's great I'm enjoying. Do you mind if I know we've been going for a long time? Do you mind if I quickly ask one last question? No, no, go up? for it. Let's see how much battery do I have left? I have nine percent. Okay. If if you if you fall off the yeah, just to mind, we just have to make a sketch and just put it in the end. Just to run <laughs> my voice through it. That's it. We'll use AI and we'll just make you say oh, something. Well. Are you they probably say they probably speak much better than me. <laughs> no way, no way. Okay, so the last question is about your work now. So yes. firstly, are you enjoying it? And also yes. what do you enjoy about it? I'm I'm actually enjoying my work. Um it's it's difficult, it's not the easiest, but what I love it is that I always wanted a challenge, I got that challenge and this uh, was a wonderful achievement for me. My first, when I walked up to this company, they, the first project they put me on was the M12, which is a, one of the major, major in projects down here in Sydney. It's like the major highway, a major upgrade to the whole Western Sydney and Sydney city itself. So doing the piling work on that, it's a big achievement for me. And the senior engineer on that project had to go on holidays and I was just left there in a what two months and I was left there too with a big big job then it's what it's kudos to the company I'll say their names if they ever watched this video Jack Longstaff and Eddie Shanley that they trusted with me and they helped me through that and everything so that challenge that battling that challenge and managing that whole project really really I enjoyed that and to this point currently I'm near Kiama or somewhere the remote doing night shifts which is a lot of people don't like that i don't really like it but 
I'm still enjoying that part of myself. So I do, I'm still feeling, and I really want, I really want to enjoy this job until I have this feeling of I'm being challenged and I'm achieving something because I'm by, I'm very close. I know the reality of this. It's kind of, I'll hit a plateau on that as well, but I'd really, until then, I really do like what I'm doing. Awesome. Well, that's it. Is there any final piece of advice, any words you'd like to say to anyone watching this before we wrap it up? Now, apart from being grateful for yourself, really don't take my words too seriously. I, I, I do ramble a lot. Do, do think for yourself as well, but never be afraid to reach out to anyone. Not everyone is a, is a bad person. A lot of people you'll find that are open to chat with you, talk with you, help you, even say hello, even might give some advice as well. There's, if the first person does, doesn't, the second will. Don't be afraid. Don't do that. And always step away from anything that makes you feel bad. You have, you have all the right and the opportunity to step away from, from something that makes you feel bad. I know this job search and everything. There's a lot of people have been in this for trying to find a job for a year or so. There's a lot of people who are in this, who have been in a month in or maybe even been three years in. It's jarring. There's no issue of taking a step back. It's always one taking a step back, coming in, getting that first achievement and feeling, oh, this is a wonderful experience. So you just have to realize there's no issue of taking a step back and and this is not a this is not a race with others. It's just a just a race with yourself in a sense that it's really up to you how quickly you want to go up there and and how safely and how happily you want to be there because there's a lot of people who sacrifice their health they sacrifice their selves to reach a certain point and they when they reach that certain point they feel like oh this isn't for this this wasn't for me so be grateful for the process and be grateful for yourself that's it it's the most cliche, maybe I can wrap it up with. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love it. Thank you very much, always. It was it was a joy to have you. And no, I look you. thank you very much. Uh, sure, of course. And thank you very much for again helping me out through all this and being very patient with me as well. I know there's a lot of been ups and downs with me. I probably would be be messaging you every single day, and certainly be off by three, two to three months as well. So. Oh, I think I think the laptop's died. I'm gonna finish it up now. Thanks always. See ya.